Okay, today we're going to dive in to technology straight out of the late 1900s. I'm talking about audio CD ripping and writing in modern Linux. Now, this used to be something that I did all the time, and real realistically, I haven't done it in years. So I'm going to try to revisit the process, and maybe we'll all both learn a thing or two. Now... I have these incredibly old uh, CDRs here. I bought this spindle used. It's a 100 spindle disc thing that was open box for $2.49. And I bought this thing about three years ago from a thrift store. Eject, the best command on Linux. This will eject any disk drive you have. Back in many, many moons ago, whenever I got a CD, one thing I would do is the first time I got my disc out, this is a copy of Nine Inch Nails Year Zero. The first thing I would do when I got a CD is I would rip it velocity to my hard drive and then burn a perfect image of it. And I'd have a backup. Um, and when someone said, hey, that's a great CD, can I borrow it? I'd be like, yeah. And I'd hand them the copy and see if they didn't get me the copy back. No biggie. I was only out like 50 cents instead of a $20 disc. Because that's how much CDs used to cost. They used to cost $20. Here I have a copy of Princess Superstar, My Machine. I think this is like from 2006, 2007. She signed all of them, which is super rad. And we're going to go ahead and rip this one now. Pop that in. And to do this correctly, um, I'm going to kind of go over this quickly. I have a full video on ABCDE um, in the link below. It's an older video, still relevant. Nothing's really changed in that front. That's the nice thing about CDR technology. Nothing has changed. So I'm going to go ABCDE and I'm going to tap output black. That's important. Lossless, not lossy. ABCD is a nice all-in-one tool. Again, link below. I go a little bit more detail on it. Um, but you got to keep in mind, when you rip a disc to make a copy, you don't want to rip it to an MP3 and then back to a CD because MP3s are a lossy format. And you want to stick with lossless formats when you're doing copies because, you know, garbage in, garbage out. You take it from the raw PCM, which sounds good, and make it an MP3, it's going to sound worse. You're going to have quality loss. If you do something like FLAC, it's going to be bit for bit perfect with the original disc indistinguishable so that's one thing we're going to focus on making sure this is indistinguishable to the original disc ripping cds and burning cds is a video very linear system even though i have a pretty beefy computer it's still going to take a bit of time because you are limited by the technology that is a cdr now this thing's going about 15 times faster than a one-to-one -one playback um, but it's still going to take a few minutes I actually took time, got myself my big goofy drink, fresh, cool water in it. Highly recommend when you are computing, when you are nerding out to make sure you stay properly hydrated. For some reason, all the albums that I hold true dear to my heart, such as uh, Princess Superstars, My Machine, um, they're fantastic albums, but they're fucking long. Um, this one has... 25 tracks and uh i'm only on track 13 right now so i should have grabbed a shorter cd to show the ripping process and the burning process but i don't really keep very many of the shorter cds because there's very few short cds that i genuinely love i had to look it up how old this disc is this uh, this came out august of 2005 Oh, look at this. We're down to the last track. It looks like it has little read-write buffer issues here towards the end, but it looks like it caught it. All right. Tagging up. Oh, there it is. And usually ejects my disc. Eject. All right. Cool. Okay. These, again, are just kind of generic, blank, silver top. I had some white, white ones that were printable. Cannot find them. Um, I hope they're still here. 
I can't imagine I would have gotten rid of them. But now we're going to go to the other half of the project. This is the part where we are building a disc. Um, and this could be, you know, you just freshly ripped a flak album or you are putting together one of your own pieces of work. So let's go look here in the folder. You have a folder, Princess Superstar. There we go. We have flak files. How do we turn this into a disc? sudo apt install bra brasero is your program i already have it installed so it's not gonna do it it's already in there so let's go brasero now this used to actually come default with the gnome desktop that's how that's how deep this was but not anymore <laughs> so let's go to the desktop select the album I'm going to put this over here and this over here temporarily. I'm going to say make a new audio CD. Control A, drag and drop. Close that one, pull that back out. Now, this may vary depending on your hardware. I tested this before and it did not work with my hardware, but my, I've had other CD burners where it would actually write the uh, CD text to the disk properly. All right, so we have the disk. It says if we burn these FLAC files back to a CDR a music CD, it'll uh, give two minutes of space left over. That's all right. Leftover space is good. Um, it recognizes the artist. It recognizes the song titles from the FLAC metadata and the name of the album. And much like before, it's going to be a lot of waiting. <laughs> we go ahead and go maximum speed. I'm going to try it out. Burn the image directly without saving to disk. That's good. Burn proof. You know what? It makes it a little bit slower. Worth it, especially with these old ass disks. So here we go. We're going to start the burning process. And it's going to take close to the same amount of time it took to uh, rip. The disk drive is no longer moving. I think I have a bad disk. That is something we should just expect to happen in the year of our Lord, 2024, with these old ass disks. Let's try another disk then. Okay, we have a fresh disk in there. Drop the files back in, it's new blank disk. We're gonna do it again, see what happens. Now, will it write the CD text? I don't know. Will this disk fail again? I don't know. The thing is, and I guess this is kind of, get, kind of giving you the classic 90s experience. I remember back when burning a CD took like half an hour. And it was like, you had to like wait. And it was only like about a 60 to 70% success rate. And discs were like two bucks a piece back then. And I was very poor. So I, I remember feeling that kind of like, oh no, is this going to go? Um. And then when it burns properly, it was like success. Ah, oh, look, it's burning the tracks. It did write the CD text. It said that like before. And now it's actually writing the tracks. So I think we got a better disc. And then we're going to examine this disc um, after we burn it. Now, as I have you captive and I have a few minutes to kill, I just want to point out this wallpaper you're looking at. This wallpaper you're looking at. Um, is a photograph I took um, with my drone. And for those of you with the high resolution screens, you can see there's a little tiny me right there operating the drain drone. And right over here next to the porta potty is my little bicycle that got me to this location in Long Beach, California. Um, this is right after the Pier J opened up. And it's the breathtaking view out there. I love going out there. Um, but I actually came back a few weeks later and I launched my drone up and a dude was like, oh, I'm sorry, you can't fly here. This is not a designated drone flying area. And sure enough, they had signs right here on the pier edge that said no drone flying. I went back and checked the footage of the day. That sign was not there when I did this. So technically, um, it was not designated as a no fly zone at least publicly that I know of when I took this picture. Um, and I would like to go back there and fly the drone someday, but I need to get permission from the port of Long Beach 
or the port of Los Angeles, which uh, is probably not going to be easy to do. I probably will never be a chance to legally get this shot again. All right, we are towards the end of the burn. That took a really long time. It's ripping at 15x, but it's burning at 10x. So, which is the max my integrated CD-ROM drive on my Dell desktop can do um, for CD audio. <laughs> um, let's see if it does a good job. We're gonna inspect the disc now as it's all done. Oh, it just ejected, which is good. Go ahead and close this. And close the disk drive again. Let's see what information we can get off this thing. Now there's a little program you can get if you install um, libcdioutils, so uh, sudo apt install that one. Again, uh, jokes on you, I already installed it. We're gonna take a peek here. With that installed, you can cd info Let's get a read. It's recognized as CD audio. It's here you see the timestamps here. It's doing some kind of ISRC. I don't really know what that is. It's reading the data. Oh, and would you look at this? We have the CD text included. Now, Browsero for GNOME is a full featured music software program, I mean, a CD burning program, and it did a really good job. It went above and beyond the Red Book standard. I'm glad we did this. I'm very tired. I'm very hydrated, though. Look at that. Look at that. Properly hydrated. I'm going to do more multimedia stuff in the future. So if you liked this video, uh, you know, thumbs it up. If you want to see more... Uh, multimedia production and creativity things under Linux. Subscribe because I got more shit coming. Um, it's going to be good stuff. We're going to do everything from audio mastering to video production stuff and even touch on some of my older stuff like the DCPs that we did before. Good stuff. It's gotten to the point where Linux has become quite the multimedia juggernaut and I'm here for it. All right, guys.